lineup then, because the Earthshaker as well as the Skyrath Mage have really long, really long initiations here, so they can move around the uh, around the map trying to find those pickoffs. And when they do find a pickoff, you can allow the Death Prophet and even the Bristleback to be able to push down the towers for you. So I think either way makes sense, right? If you push down towers, you're getting even more gold advantage for the Alchemist. In which case, he can just be. It doesn't matter if he's locked down. He just has so much gold. He's so tanky that you can't actually bring him down. Or the exact opposite, which is play Alchemist as a more aggressive hero with your two supports and allow your other two solos to be able to build off of that and take down towers really quickly and go for this like kind of really fast pushing lineup. Yeah, I think this game though is going to get uh, all the action around when Void has level 6 is going to be what decides the game because Void with his level 6 and with Invoker on the map you could you know, you could almost as expect this should be an X-Sword Invoker when you play safe lane like this. Because then you can provide something for your team everywhere with the Sunstrike. And the ganks from Void will be so strong with the Sunstrike setup. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's when this game will be decided. Can Alliance transition this DP into taking towers and pushing? Or will they get shut down early on? And in that case, C9 have much easier time playing it out, I think. Now, correct me, uh, it, does this ward actually block out the camp? It's... Yes, I believe this one oh, it it, might be, it's very close to the edge, it might not yeah. be blocking, but I think it the does. This uh, size is really huge. It's the biggest camp of any of the yeah, that, stacks. <laughs> that camp is always so hard to, to tell exactly whether or not a ward blocks yeah. it. It's, it's I'm not amazing at uh, ward spots, to be honest, because mm -hmm. I very rarely play support at all, and I don't deward that much with uh, sentries. Yeah, yeah. I deward, I, it's a gem, you know, so <laughs> I just walk around. I know it's a straight line down from the magic bush, but uh, if it is close, Close enough. It's just right on the line. I can, I can tell yeah. you that much. So, um, yeah, that's. Uh, we'll we'll see. see whether or not it blocks it. But we're gonna start out really early on here with the Earthshaker roaming into the mid lane. It looks like um, maybe just establishing some rune control. And sure enough, it does block it out. And that just leaves uh, Ake as the only support here up against Bone Seven. But Bone Seven is prepared for the Skywrath Mage. We've uh, noticed this before that off laners when they're dealing with a support Skywrath. Uh, they're going up against that, they buy an overwhelming amount of regen. Yeah, tangos. Tangos are your friend, so mass tangos is going to be uh, what Bone7 wants to use here. Had 10 tangos as he got to the lane, and going to be, uh, well, he's not going to be fine, but he will recover. That's pretty much how it is. And all the mana being used now by Ake as well. Clarity's got buffed recently as well, so he will have tons of mana. Bulldog trying to disrupt the pool here, but he might actually pay for his life for this, maybe. Yeah, um, getting low, body blocks body rather box. heavily by Pylai, dying nicely done, still a lot of quills nice coming fine. out. And Bulldog will be able to escape, really it's just that one level burst back. Hold up the Sun Strike, oh, almost stopped that health potion there. Uh, but still, Amber Bulldog just fine, and uh, well now they're going to go for Bone 7 here. Uh, Loda will get off the stun, but Bone 7 being at full health like this, he's obviously fine. Yeah, and that would have been a huge play by Envy if he managed to cancel this out. Of course, the Sunstrike would not be the difference between kill or not there, as level 1 Sunstrike is quite weak. 100 damage, sure it's pure damage, but he had more than that. So, uh, Rune, got spawn now in 5 seconds, both teams checking for runes, Bulldog checking the top one. Illusion going to be grabbed by Bulldog. He's going to be stunned up once again and takes a large amount of damage from that Aether Shock, but uh, <laughs> will be fine, especially with the Earthshaker block coming out. And uh, I believe we have 100% confirmed our answer on to what exactly kind of Alchemist we're going to be seeing here. Oh, you yeah. can already see it from the skill build, but he's on, greedy. on top of that, this we stacks. also have an Ancient stack going on, which is going to be up to Loda to clear it. Yeah, so I expect he will go for Battle Fury this game, actually, because else really? you, can't uh, you can't kill the Ancients. And it's also pretty good for just farming uh, a whole bunch. So greedy alchemists farming up. It's been a while since I saw it. Just a casual suicide here to get back to base faster. This, uh, you know, death is the fastest way to travel for a level one hero. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah, when it's so early on to the game, why not? Uh, Bone Seven has actually moved around the map a little bit. <laughs> uh, it's kind of odd, but he's actually chasing away the Earthshaker, forcing him away from pretty stacking cute. up his ancients. Yeah, pretty cute. Yeah, Void travel the world at level two. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, Void really not known as being a world traveler overall, so oh, odd guess, to see. Guess Bone 7 is changing that, but anyway, EGM is still staying on top of this. It did get blocked though by a nice uh, center ward, this one behind the tree there, and it's pretty impossible for ES to remove that ward, even if it did have um, 
tangos ready or a sentry ready, it would not be possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, he just laid down a counter ward into, uh, in order to try and free up this pole camp, but he is not finding any of the wards and... That's uh, so annoying. This camp is so extremely huge. Like, you can drop two sentries and still have a chance of missing the, sen uh, the block because it's such a big camp. There's no other camp, uh, normal camp, where you can use two sentries and not have a guaranteed D block. Yeah, like frankly, over on, it seems... uh, over on Dyer's side. If you put one sentry, then you know exactly where the ward is, unless you found it, then you know where it is, and you go to it. <laughs> Admiral Bulldog, once again, sitting on the rune, is going to get himself a regen rune. He was already pretty much at full health, so it doesn't make that big of a difference to him, but he does deny it away from Sing Sing, which is pretty important. And uh, we do see the rotation massively being pinged out <laughs> by uh, Admiral Bulldog. The two supports are going to be roaming behind the mid lane, and I expected them. Yeah, they do have a smoke, so they may actually go all the way to the bottom lane. Uh, yeah. But Faces Void doesn't add that much to a gank, so they're going to need to go on the squishier support hero if they want to do that. And Bone 7 is actually going to be silenced up. Loda does get off the stun, and they could conceivably kill Bone 7 here if he doesn't get any backtracks. In fact, he doesn't even have it. He's going to run into his two supports just in time, and Alliance will back away from that kill attempt. Uh, the Shackle's going to go out onto Loda, and with the Sun Strike, they might have a kill here. Stun goes out, couple of right clicks, and Loda will fall here. First Blood goes the way of Aoi 2000 as they move all the way to the bottom lane, and they're now going to go for Ake again. Another sap, and they're going to dive in deep for this one. Second. Wow. Kill. Double for Aoi, and he isn't even... Well, I take that back. He will die in exchange for it as the Fisher comes out from EGM, but EGM says worthy no. trade. Yeah, that was worthy, and Alliance, I think they were a little bit too aggressive. They knew exactly where the rotation was going from C9. They had a nice timing on when they were uh, walking down towards mid lane, so they should have known that the, the gank is coming, Radiance and Faces Void is really is hard attack. to bring down the way they tried to. So, uh, nice play by C9, but also over-aggression from Alliance. Yeah, we're going to see, uh, I, I like to see this. Death Prophet, I think, is one of the few heroes you can actually skip your ultimate as a as a mid early on, because you're really, uh, especially with a hero like Razor, who has such good lane presence and isn't going to be moving around the map yes, too exactly. much early on, it makes it kind of pointless to try and go for early exorcism. So you could see he's going for a 404 build. Uh, we'll see when he gets exorcism. It's going to be up to, really, uh, whenever that opening is. If as he I, gets a gank, maybe. Yeah, as I mentioned yesterday, though, I don't like at all to put in the last point into Crypt Storm. I don't think it gives you a lot of value at all. 50 more damage is not big, and getting 4 points in Witchcraft is much better, I think. Mm -hmm. Then you can get your ulti and your silence after that, and you can keep level 3 Crypt, uh, Crypt Storm for quite some time. It is going to be a little bit annoying not having the same damage as you used to on 300, but the mana cost is, you know, 30 higher if you put a point in Crypt Storm instead of Witchcraft, so... And you get a lot of other bonuses. You but, see the yeah. attempted movement here from Aoi. He's got this nice little ward set up. Um, it's hard to see, but there's a ward hidden in this rock area. And it does give you vision right in front of the tower. And now they're going to go for Admiral Bulldog. First to stun, follow up Sun Strike as well. Admiral Bulldog will be able to reflect a lot of this damage, but it's just not enough. Zap will be able to finish him up. Nice Fisher there. It's going to be able to block out a couple of heroes, and that ensures the kill onto Pylite Die. And S4 going to go for a second one onto Aoi, who's going to try and deny himself, but there are no creeps to be found. Aoi actually hiding in the trees here s4 can you sniff like, it out where, where did he go oh my what goodness a juke. they're looking what through a juke. all the trees and they will not find owie leave no stone unturned find owie yeah oh he's getting him got him <laughs> he reveals him attempts to throw out the fisher realizes owie is trapped and instead goes for the right clicks please oh man detective egm finds him I gotta say, I just, I just want to point something out. This is not your normal combination by any means. Uh, I think Alchemist works really well with Skywrath Mage and Earthshaker because of long-range initiation. All of them have long-range initiations, which is really nice. But unfortunately, the Ancient Seal is not doing anything for the physical damage that's coming out from that unstable concoction. They're yeah. going to Silence Bone 7 once again. And with the Heavy Nuke, lay it down onto Bone 7 right as the Silence Faith. They're going to go for the right click here, but Ake already being gone on. And here comes the turnaround. Bone 7 ensures the kill on the support. Now Loda's going to be comboed up as he's shackled, and now Sing Sing starts stealing away that damage behind enemy lines. There's nowhere for Loda to go, and the rotation from Cloud9 successfully 
stopping that dive. And now even trying to get a kill onto S4 here. Sing Sing getting close enough for the nuke, but not much else. So not only do they stop the dive at the bottom lane, they stop the dive at top where Eternal Envy was in some trouble there. Yeah, that was just... Again, they're playing very, very aggressively on bottom lane. I would like to see him just play for the more greedy style with Max Greevil's greed and, you know, try and get farmed up down there. Because being aggressive with Alchemist Skyrath, you do have the downside, as you mentioned, physical damage on your unstable concoction, and it doesn't get increased by Skyrath. So maybe they are, you know, miscalculating their damage or something, but they're not even that close to killing Bone 7. Yeah, like and he's, he's actually not even living going with a nice margin. Yeah, he's not even going for backtrack, by the way. So, they, yeah. like, going for this kill on Faces Void, it would actually be much harder. Like, the, the possibility, like, what if you go for that kill and dive in and you're on stable concoction, even if it is just backtrack level one, that 10% dodge chance, what if that dodges your big unstable concoction nuke? Yeah, they, there goes all of your damage. It's fine to try and deal that damage because you have some mana to use anyway on Alchemist when you're just farming, mm -hmm. but then you should disjoint after that. They keep diving and trying to get the kill after throwing the stun and seeing that it's not enough damage in my opinion they keep diving behind tower even or uh, chasing when enemy supports were quite obviously rotating so I'm not too sure about Alliance play it seems like they're not really uh, at their peak but uh, C9 nice rotation coming down now with their three smoke and level six on void yeah, this is perfect. Chronosphere onto the support, or even just Loda, because the guaranteed Sunstrike follow-up. He does get off the region, but the nukes are going to overwhelm Loda at this point, or at least should. There it goes. The yeah. right clicks are enough. And Cloud9 make a strong rotation in the bottom lane that is going to turn into a tier 1 tower push. Such fast damage coming out, and this is why we see Invoker with Exhort on safe lane is so much more effective than Quaswex. And hold that. They're actually diving to Akia here. Get some vision. Stun him. And Arcade's going to be done for, and that's going to up the kill count now to 4 to 7 in the favor of Cloud9. And again, for going for the kill. Top lane, it looks like Eternal Envy has been spotted out by S4, but there is no chance for uh, Death Prophet to be able to get that kill solo. So instead, they're going to try and pop the Exorcism early on here and take a Tier 1 tower as a trade. Yeah, trying to get a tower trade, but look at all the damage that he's taking just from one invoker harassing him a little bit. Yeah, one sun strike is enough to force S4 kind of on the defensive there and may not even be able to claim this tier 1 tower uh, as he's kind of scared of going up against the Turtle Envy. Tower's going to go down soon, but the rotation in from the Wraith King. They do get the tower, but the stun has already come out. S4. Well, he's going to be fine for the time being, but Eternal Envy, uh, I don't see when the Sun Strike's going to be up as he doesn't have it invoked. Yeah, he doesn't have mana as well for it, even with the Magic One charges, so yeah. probably smart not to try and kill there. EGM going behind here, has Fisher in one second. And the slow is going to come out as well. Eternal Envy blocked out, silenced up, and will be bursted down as Loda comes in from the side and gets the Wraith King. So, Alliance, they just had a rotation a on fruit. them in the bottom lane, and Alliance uh, strike back against Cloud9 with the rotation to top. Yeah, that haste rune on Loda was really big. He would not have gone in the kill on uh, Wraith King if it wasn't for it. Mm -hmm. And Aoi, he kind of saw it as well as Loda picked it up, but it was too late to react. In the meantime, the two offlaners are farming up. Radiant's Admiral Bulldog is going to have a, uh, a mech here in a short amount of time, while Bone 7, he's holding on to a lot of gold here. You don't think he's going to try and get a hand of Midas, do you? Oh, I think he will. I think he will. Uh, it's It's been sort of standard though for the offlane um, Void to catch up with a Midas. I mean, you could go for the straight Mask of Madness and go into the ulti as well. And mm -hmm. that's definitely a choice, but when you don't upgrade your boots for such a long time, this is a this is a Hand of Midas, I think. No, Mask of Madness with normal normal boots and Mask of Madness. Bone 7 has always had his love for Mask of Madness, you know, even though he's a Batrider, he was the one to start yes. <laughs> start pioneering this build. It really does make sense if you're not actually going for many levels of backtrack and, and trying to max out your time lock, uh, you're actually really dangerous. If you max out that time lock and you're, all you're doing is just getting damage inside a Chronosphere, that damage is going to be doubled. Every proc of, of uh, time lock does yeah. double the damage inside Chronosphere, so you're actually doing a deceptively Radiant's large amount of of damage with that bash. It can shock you, it can shock anyone how much damage a Void does in this Chronosphere. He even has solo kill potential, maybe not against Death Prophet now, 1050 is a lot to go through. Especially but with the Sun Strike, that's really yeah. what gives him that extra global, that's why exactly. you saw Ancient Apparition being picked up so much with Faces Void, it gives you that little bit of an edge that ensures Faces Void can solo go on an enemy. Yeah, I think he should go on bottom, now that he sees a few heroes on mid lane. 
but not too many revealing. He's pinging now. He wants to go. He's calling for a sun strike as well if he lands this. Uh, jump across, he's gonna reveal S4, starts going for it, and where's the Sun Strike? There it is. Coming in, S4 is gonna get low, but not low enough. Still, Roshan has been taken down in the meantime. Alliance were able to finish that up. Boat 7 is actually gonna fall space. as he did time walked in, but you're right. Let's space call it space. was created. Well, at least he pulled everyone there and his team doesn't get caught out. Maybe he could just have ignored going for this kill as well and it would be fine. But C9, they do manage to claim the Aegis, which is the bigger, bigger thing in this, and Invoker now with. Midas, Mech, Aegis, he's looking really strong to be honest. What do you think about this Mech being picked up by the Invoker rather than the Razor here, who is another good Mech here? A lot of teams like doing this, skipping the Mech on Razor just to get the earlier BKB and Agonins. Right. Oh, the Knight? No, oh, he tempts it, but... <laughs> I think it's uh, worth it, because if you have a hero, even Invoker is fine with a mech, and he can go for a Necro mid, fight like die. Yeah, he's going to be caught out. I was looking for this guy, Wrath Mage Ultimate, but when it's Slam. a squishy Shadow Shaman, you don't even need it. And that's going to put Ake a little bit closer to his Mystic Flare, which is such a key component of the hero. Yeah, truly, and even more gold going towards EGM as well, so uh, EGM, he hasn't died yet on ES. That's a really big thing for Alliance, 2, 0, and 5 on this ES, 1400 gold. Don't oh. win and die now, just as I say that. Please. Yeah, they share the damage please. between the two supports, and they're going to be fine because of that. Meanwhile, oh, the early blink dagger from Bloater was just picked up, and he's going to go on Eternal Envy with that, trying to lay down the damage, but the mech will keep him alive. And now Loda going to be turned around on beautiful Fisher, though, from EGM. Stops it for a second. They get a trade. One for one so far. Admiral Bulldog still stacking up the needles on so many of these heroes. Looks like Owie may fall here, getting close to losing his reincarnation. Oh, that five-man Fisher really <laughs> bailing out Alliance after the fail initiation. And they tried to go in, but you can't just blink in and go against the racer and uh, in this line. Oh no, Admiral Bulldog just gets baited in right into the Sun Strike, and the tower will still fall. The problem was they were left with all melee heroes to try and kill those wards. They knew their tower was going to go down if they didn't start cleaning up those wards, but still, it was just a plain old bait by Cloud9. They said, go ahead, if you get close to the wards, we will kill you. Yeah. You know what? I'm actually glad that this game is so even as it is. No team is really pulling far ahead and no team has a death timer on them either. Sure, DP is a pushing hero, but you can get rather strong with the lineup Alliance has as well. They have a little bit more stress on them than C9 for sure. But I'm so glad that the game is even because I really like both these teams. I don't want to see any of them lose, so I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. Well, if you're a fan of both teams, I think you're wishing that Alliance would win because Cloud9 are certainly in a position where they can afford a loss. In fact, they can, <laughs> a they can afford to drop two or three games uh, before they're really in the danger but zone. But they, so. they wouldn't mind a second or uh, another win as well. So Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. a little bit of extra cushion for themselves. Alliance are making a rotation in with the smoke. They do know the smoke has popped, and they know somebody is farming up this camp right here. And yep. S4 is going to be the first to reveal. Silence. Oh, he's going to lead with the Yules. Now the follow-up silence goes out just in time. Now here comes That's all the new silence. <laughs> yeah. Two silences at once. No way to get away from that. No, there really isn't. So Alliance, well, I was going to say turn this into a push, but uh, Tier 1 Tower has already fallen here at this top lane, and I mm. don't think they're ready to push into a Tier 2, especially since... I think since they want to, though. I don't think they can back off here. As is I said, there's a little for? bit of a timer on them, and I think they need to, even though it's going to be a 5-on-5 five five fight. Let's see if they actually decide to back off. They have Invis on Admiral Bulldog scouting for them, so they might just try if they get a nice initiation, and if they don't, they could back off, and uh, he doesn't really find anyone here. Uh, Eternal Envy just throwing out a uh, scouting Sunstrike, I they suppose. He didn't really now. have any vision, so... This is a very early blink for such an even game on EGM. This is a 17-minute blink on ES with mana boots as well. And jump in, there's going to be the Cronus. No, it's Silly Silence, and now Boat7 will lose his life. The Fisher block by EGM will also ensure some extra security. Now he's going to be chased down. He does have a reincarnation. Meanwhile, S4 is actually going in on Eternal Envy. Won't be enough to secure that kill. Back to Owie, who is losing more and more health. Again, he does have that second life. Alliance don't want to be diving in too deep for this. Loda holding on to that unstable caution. Goes into the back. Wants to stop that disabler. Pile I die in the background. There's no follow-up, but a huge silence, as well as an Echo Slam will be able to put Cloud9 on the back foot. They're going to take down Pile I Die. What else can they get? There goes the uh, Wraith King for the second time as well. Damn. And now well, they have to back yet. up, though. Not Fisher. a single hero has fallen yet from Alliance, and can they make this out? 
C9 Envy trying to chase after here, but he can't really catch anyone. Quite slow on Invoker. I'm not sure why Bone7 didn't Boston teleport Town out. He had attack. already revived since he was the first to die in the fight. He didn't get off Chronosphere either. So yeah. that could have been a good way to catch somebody out if he teleported the tier two and time walked in. But that's true. Uh, he, he opted to just try and walk his way into the team fight. Well, I think the biggest part was just the reaction from uh, Alliance as Void jumped in. Like, really fast reaction, oh, killing beautiful. him immediately. If he got the chrono there, the fight would have been completely different. So, amazing performance there in reacting to the scenario by Alliance. I and think uh, that's completely on Ake. I believe that was his ancient seal and not uh, S4's oh, uh, silence. This surprises but me, by the way. Uh, Invoker skipping Wex completely. I think he should have one point so he can drop the meatball if they chrono someone or multiple heroes. The Chaos Meteor, of course. Uh, Definite Blast. Of yeah. You know. Definite Blast is nice to have. I think you always want to put one point in Wex when you have level uh, 10 or 11. He's level 12 and doesn't have it yet, so that's. Well. It's not straight up bad, it's Dyer's just a little bit different. Yeah, really uh, trying to max out that Exor damage as soon as possible. I mean, th there is... I, I think it makes sense. I agree he should be going for Wex if they were going for 5-on-5 five five team fights, which is what Alliance is forcing them into. So I, I do think he should have Wex for this game. But at the same time, I can understand the, the idea, which is I'm just wanting to have maxed out Sunstrike damage that'll ensure yeah. Faces Void. Every Chronosphere he finds a pickoff, it ensures that kill because you have it's such true. an amazing amount of damage from Sunstrike. Exactly, and giving that extra 475 damage towards Faceless Void whenever he jumps someone mm -hmm. is a big thing. Even though this is a level 8 Faceless Void who d only has uh, two items right now, he can still solo kill, I would say, almost anyone if he gets the, the right help from his team. But there are some tanky heroes over on Alliance as well. Now with the full soul booster finished up on uh, S4, it's looking pretty strong. Alliance are currently uh, smoked up and looking for a pickoff, but they're not going to find it because Cloud9 are actually favoring the bottom side of the map. As you can see, Sing Sing has been farming up, even with his ultimate, uh, farming up the neutrals on that side. They even have a very large ancient stack, which they're going to try and clear through as a team because they do not have a, a single hero that's actually good against ancient stacks. Yeah, they're just keeping themselves busy here, fighting this ancient stack and mid lane. This tower is being Dyer's pressured now by Alliance. I don't think there's any feasible way to defend a tier 1 against Alliance here. So just taking Ancient is a pretty decent trade, to be honest. Yeah, it looks like Alliance realized that because they're not committing Exorcism either. Uh, S4 is dancing back and forth, trying to make sure he doesn't Alliance get caught by them to go here. Like, come and defend the tier 1, please. Yeah, well, well, we'll see whether or not it works out for Cloud9. Uh, tower will Dyer's fall. Bone7 tower does not fallen. jump. And, well, that's probably because Cloud9 is still farming up this Ancient stack. But uh, at the same time, I was almost expecting Alliance to try and push in for two because they were holding on to Exorcism, but mm. they but immediately then they back out. the side lanes. Like, look at the top and bottom farm. This is so much gold. Uh, and also going to be damaged towards the towers unless you tend to it. So it's, the, as I always say, the nuisance of having to deal with lanes. Uh, else they might have gone for a tier two mid. Who knows, though? Blink Dagger finished up on Wraith King, so C9, as soon as they have this Wraith King ulti off cooldown again, they're pretty ready to fight. And uh, gonna be going for a Hex, it seems, on Invoker next. Well, we have SNY being grabbed by Loda. Um, there's also a Bloodstone soon to be picked up by our Death Prophet. Those are the two big upgrades I would see Alliance waiting for. There's a possibility that they also wait for Bulldog to have his BKB, um, but that is a little bit later. He's He still needs a good uh, almost 3,000 gold to finish that up, so I'm not quite so sure they want to wait for that last item. But um, the other two are significant upgrades that I think they probably should be trying to at least poke at some Tier 2s here and there. Yeah, poking at tier 2 is always important, deal some damage before you go and commit to the final push. And it uh, seems that Alliance want to group up again, just go down 5 on mid lane. They would probably like to finish up the entire Bloodstone on S4 before they take a fight. It's a huge thing to get the charges, mm -hmm. but he needs a little bit of gold. He could of course sell his bottle and get it, but you might want to keep bottle a little bit longer than 22 minutes as well. Cloud9 continue the split push. Owie is uh, the first one oh, to show himself in this bottom lane. Yeah. 
how he, ever since he started playing his Visage so much, yeah. he, he has always been the name of split pushing when it comes to support. Yeah, he really has. S4 is now going to commit the Exorcism to the little tier 2 tower, and it looks like Cloud9 are willing to give this one up in exchange for just time, as I say that. A teleport in from Aoi, but it's really too late, because they're still missing their Razor, and Sing Sing is a key component for their team fight, so... Yeah. And now with Exorcism down, I don't think they can take tier 2 top, so just backing off defending bottom would be a good choice for Alliance, and then try and post for getting top tower. Meanwhile, C9, they want to try and stop this somehow. Going top wouldn't really stop it, but maybe they can go for a Roshan. Yeah, I was just about to say, do you think they can sneak into Rosh here? Because I, yeah. I don't think they can really find a pickoff on Alliance. I think it's a good time. Yeah. It's a good time, because you know the pattern of Alliance, but at the same time, Alliance, the TP mid now with Skyrath, I think they know what's up. Oh, this is uh, not looking good. Exorcism is down for 64 seconds, and that is obviously a big detriment to Alliance's next team fight um, if it does happen within this next minute. But at the same time, Alliance are pretty far ahead oh, at they, this point in time. They're not really going straight towards the Roche Pit. They're just going there now with Loda, and it could be brought down here. Yeah, Sunstrike's going to come out. A lot of nuke damage, and the Kronos here fall up. There goes Loda, already being taken out of the fight. The immediate buyback, though. They want to defend this Roshan. They cannot afford to let this Aegis go the way. Cloud9... Uh, now have to make the critical decision. Do they still try and continue to force a fight? Or do they back up and potentially give up Roshan to Alliance? Wards are actually going to be dropped inside the pit with a stun onto S4. And Sing Sing starts moving forward as well. But it's just a, a small back and forth. Roshan's getting lower and lower, though. A team is going to have to commit soon. Yeah, it's hard to commit though to this, and it seems the Alliance have a little bit better grip to go in. Oh, there Aoi starts Aoi. going for EGM. This is a great pickoff if they can get it, but already the Fisher hands on three. Aoi's going to be popped here shortly, and Eternal Envy already taken a big, large amount of damage there from that Sky Wrath Ultimate. Ake okay, is going to be focused down by the wards. Loda keeps on moving, but Sing Sing has already taken a large amount of damage away from him. Aoi's going to fall a second time as he continues to go for EGM. Fisher block actually hits Eternal Envy, and there goes the follow up on Stable Concussion, able to knock him down. And it looks like, well, Echo Slam even can be committed. And nice Yule Scepter usage there. Might Sing get Sing Sing as well. Oh, oh, oh. So that was really, really big by Alliance. They even get the ages of that and still have it on Loda. And they can just keep going here. Face this void, 45 seconds on his ulti. And he even has to run back to base. No mana. So and C9, I don't think they can hold at least the tower here. And might even be Rax. The ultimate is down though from DP. So damage not too convincing. Yeah, and uh, Bristleback also doesn't have any mana, so he can't really spam out Quills uh, for extra physical damage either. So and Volker is dead, and Razor is dead. These are two, the two main defenders here. Yeah. So at least an easy tower could damage range racks a little bit, and then back, I think. Yeah, maybe get the range racks. We're going to see five seconds up until Cloud9, and sure enough, Alliance are going to back themselves out, not committing to the range racks, knowing that that whole entire Roshan fight was a huge win for them. They shouldn't try and push their luck. Yeah. They shouldn't. And they could fake back here. They have the smoke available on Alliance, so if they want to, they can just commit again. But would make more sense maybe to just wait for DP ulti and go push top. Um, of course, Void has his ulti now, and uh, it's all C9 are alive. Yeah, he just picked up his BKB on uh, the Bristleback, so that That's is... That's very unstoppable. Well, of course, they can't stop it with their Chronosphere, but... You really don't want to target Bristleback yeah. ever. And if you commit your Chronosphere to him, then you're going to have stuff like Loda blinking in undisturbed. Uh, and even if you focus Loda, he has the Aegis now, so it's very hard to take the next team fight for C9. Which is probably why they're trying to find anything with the smoke. Yeah, basically there are two heroes that they can't target inside of a Chronosphere now. Yeah. And that is um, a rough position to be in. They have to go for the supports in the back and try and get uh, Death Prophet immediately if they can. Good Alliance smoke, so aggressive. Yeah, they're going to find they, Eternal oh. Envy here. The blink in and Eternal Envy is just being caught. The Fisher and all the rest of the magic damage will Envy, ensure a kill. Envy was doing the good old two-year-old, uh, or <laughs> two-year-old. The Havos move from two years ago. No, trust me, I have backup behind me. Just, just don't go on me. Yeah, Alliance call uh, Eternal Envy's bluff and are now going to move five and down mid and secure themselves a very early set of racks. He has buyback though, and he's going to have to do it. You can't just give up racks against Alliance lineup. Yeah. You have to defend, so Envy will have to pay for his mistakes, pay for his sins. And we see Alliance. They have to wait for creeps a little bit. Yeah, Loda moving forward. Good oh, three-man Chronosphere, chrono. and that is beautiful. They're going to start this off by killing Loda and taking away that Aegis if they can. Loda's actually getting away. Mech is actually going to save him at the last second there, and Loda manages to get out. He's going to pop his ultimate, heal up to full there, and oh, Alliance just win. forced a buyback. 
What a huge win right there for Alliance to win that fight, like, or to back out, that is to win the fight. Chronosphere and Rasta Wards both being used. Bottom tower cannot be defending in any way now by C9. So uh, C9 in an even more desperate spot, and they bought back with Invoker, of course. Yeah, and they can get uh, just a small amount of gold before they go. I, th I think they should still be going for the five band push, um, but they can secure, you're right, Dyer's tier two tower, tower real quickly and uh, possibly go straight back to middle where uh, hopefully, yeah, Aoi, quick to blink away there, realizes what's going to be happening. The rotation in from Alliance, they're not giving Cloud9 any room to breathe. Yeah, they're not. And now the DP level 16 ulti is going to hurt this Rax. I don't think they can defend. Dyer's structures are fortified. As for leading with Moda, laying down all that physical damage on the Rax. This is so hard. They, I, they just have to sack this, I think. Yeah, Grey Drax is going to go down, Melee Rax as well, Cloud9 not able to make a jump at this point in time. You can even see Bone 7, he's actually farming up, oh, the Echo Slam catches out too! Where's the follow-up, Luna? He's actually been blocked out by the same Fisher that did so much work, and unfortunately, no way to capitalize <laughs> on that beautiful initiation by EGM. Yeah, no Kappa. They managed to catch him really nicely there. I like EGM's play with the Blink and Force Staff, able to position himself so well. But uh, his team was just not close enough, so uh, nice, Radiance nice try though to find something. And attack. after all, they can just disengage. It's right. not a big thing. And how are C9 gonna punish the ES ulti being down? Pushing straight down to the Alliance tier two mid tower seems pretty risky in this game, because we don't know how many buybacks there are available on Alliance. And fighting close to their towers is not something I recommend for C9. Look at the wards right now. Alliance secured some nice vision with their push. Oh yeah, it is all over the place. Anytime Cloud9 move outside of their base, Alliance no. Because they're either going through one of the two lanes, bottom or middle, or if they go through the top lane, they, they, you know, it's process of elimination at that point. They're either smoked or they're somewhere at the top lane. Aki is actually uh, shadowing Eternal Envy right now. Yeah, and with stalking. a slow and a, a maxed out silence here. Oh no! Oh, wow. Right as Aki was going for that one. Yeah, that was nice timing on his invis by Invoker. And good thing that there was no detection on Aki this time. So, uh, seems right now that Alliance, they can just pose and go for next racks, I think. They shouldn't be waiting too long. But of course, they might just be worried about the Aegis timer. Of course, it runs out very shortly. So, they might just want to wait for the next Roshan. Yeah, as for he already has a Reaver, man. Look at, look at him. He's 2300 health. Right, Plus, he's, he's, he has... Bloodstone regen as well as a Yule Scepter, which is a significant factor, especially if you can get it off at some of those key opportunities. Yeah, that's really true. And once he has that heart, he has just non-stop regen in terms of both HP and uh, and mana, and he does buy the entire heart now. So bringing his HP up to a total of 2,869, this is hard to kill. Yeah, Bulldog I, also... Uh, never mind the Aegis, I think they can start pushing and cracking here. He yeah. shouldn't die during one... Uh, Void, uh, void ulti. Well, good uh, two-man silence there by S4, stopping any aggression out. Now he's actually going to be blocked out for a couple of seconds. He does have a blink available to him uh, in order to get out of that situation, but for the time being, he is currently stuck. S4 poking and prodding at this tier 3, knowing that they don't have to fully commit. With the melee racks already down, they can just bring this tower down to below half health and back out if they want to and wait for the next exorcism. They're in no rush whatsoever. It's yeah, the damage is being dealt. Even though it seems very silent and very slow, they damaged, you know, the tower from full HP to under 600. So really nice damage dealt. And now they can just back off, try and get the DP ulti off cooldown again. Next time they come around, they will take the tower and have DP ulti ready for the fight. So that's when the real pressure comes for C9. C9 have to start trying to get out on the map somehow, but it's so hard, to, easy to say it, but so hard to do it now that Mint mm -hmm. is just pushing in all the time. And I'm looking at some of the items being picked up by the rest of Cloud9. The Scythe of Ice will obviously make a big difference, but the rest of the items, not so much. Like, for example, the BKB on Faces Void, it's great, but at the same time, I'm looking at it and going, even if you are popping your BKB or doing Chronosphere and you're just laying down damage on the Death Prophet, you're still not going to kill her, man. That, that uh, She's more. just a total yeah. tank. The you have no damage. The only way to bring her down is like if everyone focuses her, and then I mean they need to land a, a Chaos Meteor with a Sun Strike and Deafening Blast probably right. to even bring her down along with focus from his teammates. So, as you say, really, really tough 
tough spot, and the Yule Scepter is a nice disengage as well. If they don't burst her immediately, Yule Scepter comes out, then a mech, and then suddenly you're not even close to killing her. Mm -hmm. Even the regen rune is really big. Whoa, bone oh. seven. Bone Jeez. seven. Easy on the gun there, bro. And uh, with that time lock on cooldown for just uh, a couple of seconds here, S4 is going to push his luck out a little bit. Knowing that there's not a real good way for Cloud9 to initiate other than that Chronosphere. Yeah. Next creep wave, they could try and go... Actually, they're going to go and check Roshan now as it could be up already. And uh, yeah, it's going to be very shortly. So uh, he actually spawned now. Very sad for him that he spawned right after they checked. <laughs> but uh, even so, I think they can push with this ulti now. Yep. Another exorcism going to be used here. Three tower going to fall in just one wave of ghosts. Finally, the glyph comes out. But it's still Cloud9. Where's the initiation for Bone7? He's waiting for the right opportunity. But if you wait too long and initiate, now he jumps. Actually, oh, beautiful Yule Scepter coming out. S4 is going to be able to dodge the Chronosphere. And now Loda makes his jump in. He's going to be able to pop Bone7. Sing Sing -Sing on the front line with his BKB. Trying to target S4, but he's too damn tanking. There's too much damage. GG called as Cloud9, knowing that they're going to lose this ensuing team fight. Go yeah. ahead and call it before anybody really as goes soon as down. that. Void ulti lands on nobody at all. Yeah. You know it's lost that fight. They need more than that. They need perfect execution and to bring down DP before anything happens. Even if you got the DP and the ulti, she would still be Yule Scepter for one and a half second of it or so. Right. So, uh, yeah, just a line.